Okay, bring this stuff. How far we pull them back, Lieutenant? I know. Well, it's about six miles. Can we regroup a couple of miles back? Uh, the Germans broke through south of here. We're occupying a blocking position until we can mount a counteroffensive. Get the squad ready to go out. Well, they're ready. I'll pull a vehicle for motor pull. You're walking this time. How come we'll use them to get here, Lieutenant? That was before last week's rain. Water load all vehicles, no personnel, only wounded. We always get the short end of it, don't we? Message for you, sir. There's a flag in the play. What's the matter, Lieutenant? The British infantry unit attached to the 1st Battalion north of us. They've been operating on the first right flank. The first is pulling out, but they've been unable to contact the British by radio. Tell them to do the same. Well, just where are they? In a rail depot, Chama. Well, can't the first battalion get word to them? No, the crowds are cut in between them and the British. You lead a squad. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I'm in a beat. Take anybody you need. Volunteers. Kathy, Gabowski, or Duncan around? Yeah, up there. Why? What do you want with them? Well, they volunteered. For what? The line is a cut up, up, up. We have to tell them to pull out. I'll see you later, Eisenhower. Later? Mr. Custer, ain't gonna be no later. The Indians are coming over that hill. How come you're asking us? Uh, you sit this one out. I'll see you back at Eisenhower. What's the get? He knows we're beaten, he's gonna give us a break. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Hey, uh, wait a minute, Kirby. Oh, what are you talking about? We ain't the only GIs in this army. Oh, yeah, sure. There's uh, Grabowski, who handles a PAR like he's got six thumbs, and then there's always Cappy. Oh, he's a real genius. You see this dent there? Cappy, yeah. We were coming over a ridge, and he uh, tripped on his own rifle and almost put a hole in my head. But like it isn't any sergeant, George. Now, look, we're going back to Eisenhower and no place else. <laughs>
Nous allons vous venir chez nous et un autre plan à tuer ma soeur. Tu sais le reconnaître. Then the crowd came to his house and killed his sister. He knows his fate. He's looking for him. Hey, it stopped raining. Hundreds of crowds around here, and he's looking for one face. Well, what are we going to do with him? They evacuated this whole area already. Well, maybe the crowds moved in behind us. Hey, kid, let me look at that pea shooter. Que dit mon fusil à personne avant je trouve celui qui a tué ma sœur. Kid says he won't give his rifle to anybody until he finds the guy who killed his sister. Et où allez-vous? Pourquoi n'allez-vous pas comme le reste des Américains? Kid wants to find out why we're not moving back like the rest of the Americans. You just tell him we had on the cue to attack a stupidity. Ask if there are any crossers in here in the railroad depot. Hey, t'as vu des Bosch entre ici et la, la station? Oui, beaucoup de Bosch. Mais je connais une, une autre rue pour aller là-bas. Says there's a lot of crowds between here and the station, but he knows a back road on the other side of the town. Well, we can't take him with us. Well, you can't leave him around here with that thing. He's going to get clobbered. A kid looking for a face to kill. Well, uh, what do we do now, Sarge? He knows the road. Tell him to stick close to us. How do you call petit? Robert. Robert, huh? Hey, viens. Kid says this road joins the main road to Aino, the other side of town. Et puis les fermiers usent ça pour amener leur récolte au dépôt. There's the farmer who uses that road to bring their crops to the depot. Maybe the crops don't know about it yet. Let's go. Sarge, radio's all busted up. Shot went right through it. All right, ditch it. Who goes there? Sergeant Sawn, this 361st Infantry. I have orders for the commanding officer. How'd you get here through all those crowds? <laughs> maybe we flew over them. And maybe those aren't your uniforms. And maybe we really are little elves, eh? All right, knock it off. I said I want to see the officer in charge. All right, this way. Keep your eyes open.
You men can stay here and get a mug up. Come on, Sergeant. Come in. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, this is Sergeant... Um, Saunders, 361st. That's right, sir. He uh, wants to have a word with you. Come in, Sergeant. You look tired. Well, we've been pushing pretty hard to get here, sir. Oh, what makes it so urgent? You and your man are going to have to pull out of here and fast, sir. Fall back to Eisenhower. Right. Fall back to Eisenhower? Who ordered this withdrawal, Sergeant? First Battalion, sir. But for what reason? Well, the crowds broke through south of here, and uh, we're pulling back all along the front. I see. Unfortunately, our radio receiver broke down this morning. But it seems that the uh, situation has become more fluid during our silence. I was expecting a messenger from 1st Battalion American HQ, but nobody turned up. So I sent one of my own men about an hour ago. 1st Battalion couldn't send a messenger, so the crowds are between the two of you in strength. I must say, that's very helpful. Poor old Wilkins, it must be halfway there by now. Still, he's a good soldier. He wouldn't turn back before reaching his objective. All right, Sergeant. Thank you for delivering your report. I'll think about it. But now I must go see to my wounded men. Hey, Captain. Maybe I haven't made myself clear, but you and your men, you have to... You have to pull out of here. Look, Sergeant. You delivered a message. I need time to consider it. I suggest that you rest here for a while, till I come to a decision. Now, Captain, there's no time. I said, till I come to a decision, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Deeds, how are you feeling? A bit better, sir. I have some good news for you. I'm arranging to have you sent home. Top priority. Oh, thank you, sir. But you won't have to wait long. Just a matter of a day or two. Oh, it's bolt, eh? Oh, that leg. How long is it going to take when we get that leg healed up? We've got to get this return soccer match, haven't we? I'm surprised, sir. The non-coms are three up on the offices now. Oh, come on, Bolt. Give the officers a chance. We're entitled to a return match, aren't we? Oh, Johnson, have a look at your arm. How's that, how's that hand now? Well, sir, I can move the old digit a bit. Oh, well, we'll have the whole lot moving for long, won't we? McDonald, how's the split? Comfortable? Oh, it's all right, sir. Uh-huh. Well, we'll have you playing the bagpipes before long, won't we? Oh, if you hold them for me, sir. I won't have to do that. <clears throat> oh, by the way, chaps, this is Sergeant Saunders. Since our radio packed up, he's been sent to keep us in touch with American HQ. Does that mean we'll be moving out soon, sir? Yes, Bolt, that's the idea. As soon as Jerry eases back a bit, uh, we'll be moving out. Right, Sergeant? See you later, chaps. You've been hit pretty hard. Oh, no, nothing really. A little artillery lace work around the edges and some casual sniping, just to keep us on our toes, you know. That's it, Captain. You've been hit pretty hard. Rawlings! Sir! Aren't you men in the habit of standing with tension in the presence of an officer? That's all right, Sergeant. Stand a minute, ease. Stand at ease. Sergeant, I want to introduce you to one of our American fellow sufferers, Sergeant Saunders. Sergeant? Well, I'm afraid that Sergeant Saunders has brought us some bad news. 
It seems there has been a slight German tactical breakthrough to the south of us. Our American unit commander has ordered us to withdraw to Eisenau. Withdraw, sir? We haven't made a withdrawal since we hit the beaches at Normandy, sir. Yes, I'm well aware of that. But since our radio is unserviceable, I thought you'd be interested in hearing the news. Sergeant Saunders, your men look as though they could do with a hot meal. We'll get it pretty soon, Captain, as soon as we get back to Eisenau. No, Sergeant Saunders. We are not withdrawing to Eisenau. At least not until I am more aware of all the considerations involved. There's only one consideration, Captain. You were ordered to pull back. Sergeant, I appreciate the difficulties that you and your men went through to bring this message to me. But as you may know, or may not know, an officer is entitled to make his own decisions in the field when it is impossible to communicate with his superiors. And I have my own wounded men to consider. Now, Captain, we found that boy on the other side of town. He showed us the road that intersects the main road about a quarter mile from here. Now, it's muddy, but it's passable. You can load up your wounded and get him out that way. I see. Hey, garçon. Does cette route peut-il continuer jusqu'à Aino? Oui, oui, mon capitaine. Je vous remercie bien. Well, it seems that the road does go all the way through to Eisner. Well, that's one consolation. All right, Sergeant Rawlings, I want you and Sergeant Saunders to carry out a patrol tonight. Sir? Observe the condition of the road and check any German activity and report to me later. Captain, me and my men won't be around here tonight. I thought I made it clear to you, Saunders. I am ordering you to remain here. Thank you. In this village, we saw the crowds moving in. Now they're going to have this whole place locked up in a couple of hours. All the more reason for you to stay, Sergeant. I'll need all the help I can get. Is five or six men going to make that much difference? That's neither here nor there. When I was attached to your first battalion, my company was considered one of the best fighting units in the British Army. If I retreat now, and later it proves unnecessary, I shall not only lose the respect of my men, but that of my superiors. What's more important, Captain, the respect of your men or their lives? Sometimes the two are inseparable. Right, Sergeant? You're dismissed. <laughs> Doc, why don't you give a wounded a hand in there? They could use it. Hey, aren't we leaving, Sarge? No. Well, can he really do that? I mean, orders to stay like that? He can. And he did.
There goes the road. Three Germans don't make an army. We're going up the road to see if they have any vehicles. We'll never get the wounded over this road. I say we go back. Look, Rawlings, this mission isn't my idea. Your captain ordered us to reckon out of the road, and that's just what we're going to do. Let's go. We go with them? Guys, we got this afternoon. I told you to turn back, but you wouldn't listen, would you? Hi, lad. Did you bring back any souvenirs? Back side, this is the fierce mess of our night to be out. Hey, Sarge, what happened to Robin? Sergeant Rawlings has already told me his version of the mission. Now perhaps you would care to tell me yours. The road is accessible except for enemy patrols. But you were advised to return, Sergeant, which advice you disregarded. Why? Our mission wasn't completed. As the captain put it, I made a decision in the field. And that cost the life of one of my men. That's right. Sergeant Rawlings, would you say that road is tenable? It's heavily shelled, sir. It's muddy. Condition our vehicles are in and the wounded to consider? No, sir. I must agree with Sergeant Rawlings. If that road was only used by occasional patrols, then your skirmish has now caused the enemy to concentrate his entire strength in that area. Also, you haven't been completely honest with me. I spoke to the boy Robert, and he told me about your earlier skirmish, which also took place on that road. Now, Captain, I told you the crowds were moving in. All right, Sergeant, we'll consider that an error of omission. But the point is we must have some clear-cut positive thinking from now on. 
from everyone. We shall not attempt to reach Eisenhower. We shall remain here, all of us. And you will act in accordance with our procedures. Is that clear? Now, Captain, you listen. That's enough, Sergeant. You're dismissed. Yes, sir. Doc, would you mind taking care of my wounded? No, sir. I got no part in this argument. It's part of my job to keep people alive. Well, that's mine too, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Going for Robin. If you ask me, they're screwy. By the time the crowds get through with them, they'll all be so full of holes, they'll pretend they're piccolos. You better get used to the tune, Kirby. They'll be around for a while. and the Sarge get us out of here. That captain's a limey, but he's still a captain. So he's got to follow his orders. Hey, how about getting him turn that jukebox down a little, will you? You keep your mouth shut. He got Robin killed, we'll play our music. For you. What did you say? I said you got Robin killed. Listen, nobody is responsible. I wasn't speaking to you. Love me, love my sergeant.
Corporal Joyce, stand up. Your legs. Been with the captain a long time? Since the start of the war. And before that? I've been in His Majesty's service for 19 years. 19 years, huh? Ali must be pretty important to you, huh? Do my job best way I can. Yeah, I guess we all do. About Robin. Uh, were you... We were together a long time? Since Alamein. Rollins, I've been trying to talk to your captain. I can't get through to him. Maybe you can help. You and the captain speak different languages, Sergeant. Well, maybe you can explain them to me. I doubt it. Will you try? The captain's a Sandhurst man. Sandhurst, what's that? Same as your West Point. His family have had officers in the British Army for donkey's years. His own father was a general. Well, what are you trying to tell me? He's an intelligent, capable officer. Well, if he is, why all of a sudden is he trying to fight this whole war alone? The captain's actions are not sudden, Sergeant. It's the nature of the man. He doesn't know the meaning of defeat. Why, a couple of months ago, we're passing through the village of Roulon, and three of our men, as green as grass, get themselves trapped with a jerry machine gun. Before you could say Jack Robinson, the captain ran over to that nest, and he dropped a grenade right into the laps. Right, you're talking about the lives of three men. I'm talking about the lives of, of 100 men. Rollins. Will you talk to your captain? You get him out of here before it's too late. Sergeant, the captain has given his orders, and we're going to follow them. Will you try, Rollins? Just try. I can't. <laughs>
I tried, sir, but the bloody thing's jammed. Well, run for your procedures, man. All right, get it closer to you. Can. up with that mending, Doc. That sergeant of yours may pull that withdrawal he's so anxious about. Yeah, well, that captain of yours may wish he'd taken the sergeant's advice before this is finished. A British captain doesn't take advice from an American sergeant. Stay, huh, Captain? Now we're locked in. Captain, you have the bazooka? No, you're blocked out. What about anti-tank grenades? Not left.
All right, Rawlings. See that the men get ammunition distributed them in their positions. And work them turn and turn about so they can get something to eat. All right, sir. Good work, boys. Thanks, Captain, sir. Well, Sergeant, for a man so obstinate by nature, you've proved yourself refreshingly inventive. That means thanks, and you're welcome. The Germans have taken up position further down the road. They'll be back with a lot more like them. Well, we'll be ready for them. But, Captain, those orders I delivered yesterday, they still stand. We're not completely cut off yet. We can still pull out and try for that road. We could. But Jerry seems to want this depot pretty badly. He might even give up his advance if he can't get it. Captain, we were lucky this time. If they really want this depot, they have the strength to take it, and you know it. We shall see, Sergeant. We shall see. Part of What Are the Bugles Bowing For? 